This video describes how to manage multiple JDKs within Eclipse. Eclipse runs on Java and is used to develop Java, but you are not required to use the same versions of Java for these two purposes. Every project in Eclipse can use a different version of Java than the IDE is running on. In this video, we'll sort this all out and show an example of installing three versions of Java and using them all in Eclipse. In this video, we'll demonstrate installing three versions of the Java SDK on your computer, controlling what Java VM Eclipse runs on by using your Eclipse INI file, setting up and using multiple JDKs within Eclipse, and configuring Eclipse projects to build and launch on a particular JDK and use a particular source level for compiling their code. We're going to install Java 1.6 Update 45. Java 1.7 update 75, and Java 1.8 update 31. When this video was made in early 2015, these were the latest versions. The Java 1.6 SDK is already past end of life, and the Java 7 SDK goes end of life in April 2015. So use caution when running these versions of Java on the internet, and don't use them in your browser. First we'll install Java 1.6 and then the others, but the order doesn't matter too much. We are doing this install on Windows, and later we'll discuss some files put in the Windows System32 directory, which can create problems when multiple virtual machines are installed. For this video, we're just installing to the default directories, but you may choose another place on your disk. After the SDK installs, we install the Java 1.6 virtual machine. We won't be using the standalone virtual machines because the SDK includes a virtual machine. So you don't have to install these, but for this example, we will. When the installation is completed, we'll exit the installer. To check our install, we'll launch a command prompt. If we run the command java-version, we should get the result JDK16 update 45. And we do. Next, we need to install the Java 7 and Java 8 SDKs using the same basic process we just went through. We'll skip over these straightforward installations. You can do these on your own, following the same steps we just showed. When you get finished installing Java 8, if you're still checking at the command prompt, you might run into a problem. This happens on Windows because some files are copied into the Windows System32 directory. We need to delete them. Usually under your C drive in the Windows slash System32 directory, Java places copies of the Java executable. These executables simply look up in the Windows registry where the Java Virtual Machine is installed and run it there. They're redirects. These redirects are the root cause of the problem we saw at the command line. We'll go ahead and delete them and set up our virtual machines with a path. To get the path I want to use, I'll go into Program Files, Java, and then go into the JDK 1.8 that I installed and copy that path. We bring up the Windows Environment Variable Editor dialog and add a new variable called Java underscore home, all capital letters. Then we paste the path to the JDK 1.8 that we have installed. Setting Java Home to where your Java virtual machine is installed is good practice. Many apps look for this. Plus, we can use Java Home to make setting up the path easier. Editing the path environment variable in a fixed dialog is a pain, so we cut and paste the text into a notepad editor. We then add percent Java underscore home percent backslash bin to the Windows path. We have to then paste this big string back into the small dialog to make sure we update the path environment variable. To test that we've set this up properly, we'll run another command prompt and run the command java-version, which should come back with the 1.8 virtual machine, and it does. If you're using OS X, the location where the Oracle installer places the JDK can be a mystery. All the installed JDKs end up inside library, java, java virtual machines. This is the path you'll need to configure these virtual machines within Eclipse. Linux users manually control where SDKs are installed. In this Linux installation, the path has been set up to use a Java 8 SDK that is in the applications directory of my user account. 
Let's switch back to our Windows example. At this point, if you install and launch Eclipse, it will use the Java Virtual Machine we've just set up in the path. This may be what you want, and you may be able to just press on. However, next we're going to show how to use the Eclipse.ini file to control exactly what virtual machine Eclipse runs on. On Windows and Linux, the Eclipse.ini file is located in the same directory as the Eclipse executable. The Macintosh is more complex. We'll return to that. I've gotten the location of my 1.7 Java Virtual Machine. Now, editing the Eclipse INI file, we add a line that says dash VM and align with the full path to the Java Virtual Machine. Under Windows, the virtual machine is javaw.exe. On Mac and Linux, it's just Java, no extension. We'll save our edits to the Eclipse INI file, then go and launch our Eclipse. Once Eclipse is started, we want to verify that it's running in the 1.7 virtual machine we set up. We choose Help about Eclipse and then click on the button Installation Details. In the Configuration tab, scroll down until you find the setting Java.Version. And we confirm that the version is the same as what we set up in the Eclipse INI file. A good question is what VM should we run Eclipse on? I recommend the latest Oracle 8 virtual machine. In Java 8, Oracle combined JRocket with the JIT and got rid of the idea of permgen memory. Permgen memory stored things like classes and strings. The problem with permgen memory is Eclipse used a lot of it and could crash if you didn't set it high enough. In fact, the Eclipse INI file contains not one but two settings to increase permgen size for the launcher and the Eclipse IDE. We can delete both of these if we use a Java 8 virtual machine. Another setting in the Eclipse INI file that we want to increase is the memory we're allowed to use. I've increased this from 512 meg to 2 gig in this example. Having a lot of memory available is important when you load in extra tools, such as the SureLogic tools or Java Enterprise tools. We'll save our changes to the Eclipse INI file and launch Eclipse again. We can use the same technique we used previously to double check that our Eclipse is now running in 1.8. And it is, as we expected. On Windows and Linux, your Eclipse INI file is in the same directory as your Eclipse executable. On the Mac, it's more complex to find. First, you have to find where you installed Eclipse and get into that directory. The file can be found inside your Eclipse.app directory under Contents Mac OS. On my Mac here, the only change I've made is to increase the memory to 2 gig. Let's explicitly set the virtual machine to 1.7 on the Mac as an example. We add our dash VM line. The only rule is it needs to be before dash VM args because everything else in the file will be taken as virtual machine arguments after that point. On the Macintosh, the paths are a little odd. We have to cd into content slash home and then into bin under the JDK directory. That's where the Java executable is. I'll go ahead and copy this path and paste it into the eclipse.ini file. All we need to do is now add Java to the path so that it finds the virtual machine. I'll save my changes to the Eclipse INI file. Next, we'll launch Eclipse and confirm that we are running on Java 1.7. On the Mac, the About Eclipse menu item is under the Eclipse menu to the far left. Following the same steps we did on the PC, we can confirm that Java version is 1.7. Once again, let's return to our Windows example. Now we'll show how to configure Eclipse so that projects can use all of the Java SDKs that we have installed on this Windows machine. We start up Eclipse and then choose Windows Preferences. Under that, we open the Java tab and click on Installed JREs. Eclipse sets up the Java 8 SDK that we are using to run Eclipse on. Any others we have to set up ourselves. To add the 1.7 SDK, we click Add. Make sure Standard VM is selected and click Next. Click the Directory button, and here's where we have to know where the SDK is installed on our disk. On my machine, I go to C colon Program Files Java, and then select the root of the Java 1.7 SDK directory. 
The path on the Macintosh, as we've noted before, is different. I'm showing adding a 1.8 VM to a Macintosh Eclipse. We go into Library, Java, Java Virtual Machines, JDK 1.8, and then Contents Home. And that's the path we need. As a default name for the JRE, Eclipse uses the last path segment. For the Macintosh, this doesn't make sense, so we change it. That's the big difference on the Macintosh. Now back to our Windows example. Eclipse fills in the rest, and we just press Finish. Now we have two JDKs installed, and we can go ahead and add the 1.6 JDK. At this point, we have three different JDKs installed in Eclipse, and we can use all of them for software development. This dialog also controls which of these JREs is the default. We're going to check 1.7. That's what we'd like to use. Depending on your environment, this might be 1.6 or 1.8, but we'll stick with 1.7. Of course, any project can override the default and use the JDK it wants to. Next, we'll show some examples of setting up projects to launch and build on a particular JDK. First, we'll create a new project in Eclipse called Test 1.6. Notice the JRE section in the middle of the dialog. You can choose an execution environment, choose to use a specific JRE by name, or to use the default. We'll ask for Java Standard Edition 1.6 execution environment for this project and press finish. In this project, we'll create a test class that has a main that prints the runtime version of Java. If we run this program, notice the output down in the console at the bottom is 160 underscore 45. Next, we'll create a test 1.7 project and set that up to use Java Standard Edition 1.7. We'll go ahead and copy our main.java class from the 1.6 project and paste a copy into our 1.7 project. If we run this program in this project, we get the result 170 underscore 75. Now let's create a test Java 8 project and set that up to use Java 8. By mistake, I left the JRE at Java 7, so when we paste our main program into this project and run it, the result will be 170 underscore 75, the same as the test 17 project. We can fix this by right-clicking on the Test Java 8 project and selecting Properties. First, under the Java compiler, we need to set our source language level. We're going to change it from 1.7 to 1.8. This will trigger a recompile of the project. Next, we need to change the SDK we're running and building against. To do this, we go to the Java Build Path tab and go under Libraries. You click the Add Library button. Select JRE System Library and click Next. Now we can choose a system library in a manner similar to what we could have when we created the project. In this case, I'll choose an alternate JRE and choose my 1.8 installation. Once this is in place, I can remove the Java 7 library from my build path. Now we can rerun the program and we'll get the expected answer, 180 underscore 31. Notice that in Eclipse, the language level that you compile and the JRE that you build against don't have to be the same. You could, for example, build your code at the 1.6 source level and still run on a Java 8 VM or a Java 7 VM. The drawback is that you might start using libraries from the more recent version of Java, causing your application, if it's 1.6 source, to no longer really run on 1.6 virtual machines. Finally, I've changed the code in our 1.8 project to actually use a lambda expression. Running this code returns the same result, but you can see that it is actually at Java 8 source level. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video helps you manage multiple JDKs in your Eclipse better.